So I'm going to go through some background, um, how we started, where we are at, and what we, what we ended up doing. So sure. I know we started this conversation about a couple of months ago, uh, Todd. Yeah. Back in de December, January, and so things have changed a little bit. Uh, Microsoft has also introduced a release a solution uh, where you can actually automate uh, the document tagging. So I'm going to kind of start talk on a surface, uh, but uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to present uh, my learnings, my sharing, right? So what I've learned uh, during this project. Um, what I, about me? I'm a first-time MVP. Passionate about Power Platform, I came from AppDev, SharePoint for many years, and then uh, Power Platform. I ran SharePoint user group, still run, but uh, don't tell anyone, but I have more love towards uh, Power Platform now. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I live in Austin, Texas, uh, very close to uh, Reza here. I've known Reza for a long time. So we should never let Reza go first because see, I, 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 we were given 15 minutes. He took, I think, 25 minutes. So listen and learn. Reza will go last. <laughs> <laughs> but fantastic, wonderful session. Uh, yeah, definitely learned a few things there. All right, so that was a little bit about me. I uh, lead uh, a power, power Platform practice at Cyclotron, um, and obviously I, I, I work from Austin, Texas. So anyone in the call interested to start a group here, Power Platform user group, let me know. Let's work together, and then... Uh, so hopefully things will settle down here soon so we can uh, go in person, hang out, have some beer and chat. All right. Um, so the project was about the problem statement. Uh, the client was like, we received thousands of documents per month. Uh, over a year, it could be around 15 to 20K uh, documents. And then we're like, how about templates? My first thing was, uh, is it just one template? Uh, we can I can automate it using AI builder, right? Create a model and then you input and you boom done. No, and then maybe then came in with that form processing. Now you can um, it can handle up to hundred templates, meaning you can create in one model. You can have hundred different form templates and that can handle in one model. So I said like, how about this? You may only have hundred, no more than hundred. That's a lot. And like, no, no, no. We received these warranty, security, all these documents from thousands of companies, and there are no format. There's no format. It could be, it could be way over 100 format for sure. I was like, then all right. So what do we do? Then we kind of started looking into options, and started with um, AI Builder. Uh, even looked at RPA, uh, robotic processing automation, to see if we can automate using AI Builder. And finally, where we went was, and then the, the, and the, the last requirement was we need to be able to search for some keywords in the document because they were, they were having, I think, a couple of people full-time sorting out this paper and then categorizing and uploading into SharePoint. And so what keywords they were looking were, those are the key point for us where, okay, we'll, we'll map. We create a list with all these keywords mapping, right? If you have this, this, this keyword, then this is the... the the, uh, the mapping is this, right? So that's the design we went. Uh, the first solution was using AI Builder uh, and then went over to Azure Cognitive Services and then Computer Vision. We landed a Computer Vision, the last option, uh, and I'll share why. Uh, the first one, AI Builder, I already told you why we could not do it because of various templates. Um, the model was, we'd have to create constantly these new models and train anytime new documents would come. And so because of the variation of document that we're receiving, we could not do that. And the, the, so as we were uh, kind of looking into that, uh, Microsoft came in, I think earlier this year, where this uh, document automation, so, okay, so many text in here, but I mean, kind of summarized uh, requires a model to be trained. That's I just now mentioned just now, right? Right. Uh, supports only up to 100 templates uh, in one model. And then the document automation was um, recently released. Uh, it has some dependency on you need a dataverse, you need an app license, you need AI builder add-on, and then also you have reviewing whoever are the reviewers, they need uh, licenses. And then came in OneDrive for a business. So OneDrive for a business has an action called convert file. The only problem was 
if you have, uh, you can feed this into OCR, and OCR requires optical character recognition, right? It requires um, uh, optical, uh, that requires an image. So, but OneDrive, if you give PDF to OneDrive and try to convert into image, it only converts the first page. It doesn't convert the rest of the pages. Like, boom, that's not going to work. So, all right, so what, where do we go now? And then, we, then only we went to computer vision and said, all right, we're going to, there's a, a REST API or a read API for a computer vision. And then that's when we were able to extract all of the content in JSON, and then we parse out the JSON to see what the content is. And that's what I'm going to show you here. I have all of these uh, references towards the end. I'll put it in, um, uh, but, but I will show you my other screen here. And this is just a high level uh, flow, but I'll, I'll show you. I know the, the call is for Power Apps, but I'm showing you guys uh, kind of sneaked in just the Power Automate part of it. But trust me, you can create an app to automate just for the time being here because this is only limited time. So I, I was focusing on just the core that I wanted to uh, pass. All right. So how yeah, absolutely you... right. You could make a power app and upload an image and kick absolutely. this off and then go through absolutely. the same the process facilitate field workers or something like that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. The the, the ultimate goal was to uh, obviously you can uh, have uh, an app where, like, like you mentioned, um, uh, frontline workers can upload and then pass it into and then tags properly. Uh, in this case, we were getting it from FTP, that from third party, we were getting the files. And then we, uh, the way we did was one time upload into the library and then files were scanned, processed, uh, because you have to extract metadata for each of those. So I'm showing you here all three options and how we were able to get uh, strings, right? Extracted strings. And then obviously, like, like I mentioned, we went with this option because this was more scalable. Uh, the, what, this gave us what we needed. Uh, we ran into issues on this one because of limitation. Uh, we were, again, this one was OCR, uh, the one, OneDrive, because not all documents are received in an email. If they are received in PDF, then OneDrive for business connector uh, would only give us um, the one page. I did kind of reach out to Microsoft. I haven't heard yet. And like, hey, when are you going to have this? So if this becomes uh, OneDrive for Business can convert all of the PDF pages into image, then this is becomes much, much, much simpler. Whereas right now we're doing uh, HTTP. So I do have um, Cognitive Services API that I have to create the service in Azure uh, same thing with um, uh, a computer vision service in Azure, right? So you definitely have to create those endpoint keys, then only you can use. But this is very straightforward. Um, you just have the key, plug it in, establish the connection, and then you start using it. I'll show you first uh, the, the, the first thing that we tried. Uh, here, uh, basically um, passed in, like I said, uh, we got the file and then uh, the, the solution also that we implemented was, uh, I'm going to show you here, settings. And so if the status is new or rerun, sometimes it may fail, so they want to rerun. So we're capturing, we're only running on these statuses that we were kind of minimizing number of runs because the, obviously there you're processing thousands of files. Um, you don't want to uh, just run because uh, the capacity is a limited capacity, right? So doing this, you're, you, you have Azure consumption. You're minimizing number of uh, user licenses that you don't need power, premium power platform licenses. You only need the Azure consumption. So it goes from, I don't know, from one or two users, uh, user licenses you can do in Azure, very, very minimum from, uh, from you're comparing dollars to pennies, right? So. Uh, definitely best practices use that one. It saved us a lot of runs, which means a lot of uh, money for the customer. Um, and then, so when you convert, um, you, I can I could only use for one page. If it's a one pager, then the convert OneDrive worked. Uh, so I'm extracting uh, the results, and then basically it, it has the, the it has the each pages will have each lines, and then you parse through and extract, and then you you create. So I'll show you one. Uh, for this one, right? So I'll show you one result where I have.
OK, so before I do that, uh, this is the library and that's the. Come on. Seriously. Oh, there you go. And then that's the. The category subcategory and then the keywords that we wanted to search. Uh, so this is you may think uh, this is still manual, but at least uh, it gives you an option to. And so when we give this to the customer, they were like, oh, yeah, this is they wanted to be able to manage so they don't have to go to flow to say, OK, here are my keywords and here is the mapping. So you just go into the flow. You're kind of extracting that logic from flow into list and they can manage. So they are not only be able to use this one for this just solution that they can be ported to another solution. Also they change. You can change right as long as the keywords, the, the, the columns and they are same. You can use the same flow again and again for uh, to multiple departments as well. All right. Um, and then uh, if I show you here. I'm not watching uh, the chat. I'm just focusing on the air, but I'll, I'll get back to any questions uh, if there are. Um, so uh, let me see uh, the output. So there's the output right from that file that was uploaded. Um, I am okay. Uh, so that didn't run. And how about on the last one? And do until so if I come if I were to compare, so similar content like see uh, the text were extracted. So the, the gist of this demo is that there are multiple options. Uh, understand um, uh, your scope of it. Uh, you have you hit limitation on AI builder out of the box connector uh, extract text from image. There's a limitation OCR same thing. There's a limitation because of OneDrive. If your content, if your source file is all images, then OCR is your perfect uh, place to go. Very easy to configure. There's no uh, just one uh, API that you have to register uh, in Azure, and then after that you're, you're set. But then if that nothing else works, then go to computers of and read API, and um, th that that solves the problem. I know I kind of summarize at a high level. Hopefully this is as useful. Any questions for me? Um, I did see a question that Daniel had regarding the confidence score. So when you do the OCR, you can get back a score that tells you how confident OCR That's right. it was. They got the answer right, right? That's right. Yep. Do you have anything built into your process that if it's below X score that it sends an email to somebody to look at it or rejects it automatically or anything like that? So there is the, the API has different statuses. And so based on that, we are we are logging everything into uh, another uh, list. And so based on the type of uh, the solution that I don't have it here, but on, on our if it failed like five times in a row within the uh, 50, like 30 minutes, then we will alert. Sometimes uh, they're not important. Uh, they, they just want to run and they will come back and review. So based on different statuses, uh, uh, the sentiments, uh, the act, the the the, uh, the statuses that they're put, putting in. You have running started. If it's on running for 10 minutes, then th there's an issue. Uh, we had to put some delay because the REST API was taking time to process. It will be on running, and so th there are some uh, logic to it. I think on here somewhere, uh, I had to put 30 seconds, and that we found that by playing that we were we were able to overcome the er error message. Otherwise, it would just fail and say it's still running, and then the the next step will start. So we had to wait for 30 seconds for that to finish. Uh, so yeah, there are we're looking few of those. Obviously, this is a trimmed down version for this demo, uh, not a not a full, but at least it it kind of encompasses what what you can do and um, what, what what possible within this uh, three options. Yeah, here's the delay. There it is. I see. Yeah, I'm glad you were able to talk to us about the three different options because in your case, you had to pick this option, but there are other options that. That's you, right. If you have, uh, in your case, if you only had 20 different templates, for example, you could have gone with those other. Absolutely. Those other options. Did you run into any throttling limits with this? For I, I know you said it takes about 30 seconds to make sure you get your response, but. Uh, did you have to make sure you didn't submit a certain amount within a certain time so the service didn't block you? 
So we did not test the, the volume that they were receiving where, yes, they were um, about 15 to 12 to 15, 15 to 20, somewhere around like 15K files, but it was basically spread out. They, they were, so we have, I have not tested with like hundreds of files. Um, we tested about hundred, couple of hundreds, but not in thousands. And since they were spreading out, the, the files mm -hmm. they were receiving was, uh, they were receiving from different vendors and they're kind of spread out. If it was from one vendor, then it would have been like, we'll have to focus on that throttling yeah. issue, but we didn't run into that. So yeah, I, I don't know what it would be if, you, if I were to throw in uh, thousands of uh, uh, files in here. Gotcha. Well, that's, that's nice. You didn't have to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. No concurrency worries there at all. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. have a blog post or example of this anywhere, or is 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 I, to follow up on this one? Or uh, yeah, I, know I, I, I saw you I, added some links on related topics to the slide deck too. Yeah, I don't have right now, but uh, that's probably a good idea. That's kind of motivation for me to get uh, something going. Uh, I would like to share, but yeah. So some of the things that also will be uh, if you have going with free version, then you get four megabyte files. Uh, if your files are larger, then you have to go with paid version, which is up to you get up to 50 megabyte uh, files can be processed. Uh, there's a limitation of if you have a landscape document and then, I mean, later and then the, in the middle you have a landscape, then that's that mm. comes in as invalid. Uh, so yeah, lot, lots of uh, few few limitations, but as long as you're just standard format, it, it, it works perfectly fine. That's great. It's amazing how little code we have to write to do things like this nowadays. Right, exactly. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate sure, it. No problem. Yeah, thanks for the Great. opportunity. Like I said, uh, thank you so much.